All right, we'll take your Bibles tonight, if you will, please, and I want you to turn over to the book of Revelation, the book of Revelation tonight, Revelation chapter number 12, Revelation chapter number 12, and so I told my wife, coming down the road tonight, I said, whatever, let's do, let's make sure we walk very, very close to the Lord, because I know what I'm going to be preaching on tonight. And we've had, man, we've had a time today. I'll tell you what, had a had a, a tough time getting on Countdown to Courage today, and it took me almost an hour just to get where we could where we could broadcast today, and and then we got here tonight early, and we're having multiple technical difficulties with things that always work just fine here at the church. And I told the guys, and I'm not surprised because I know what I'm preaching on tonight. And so, in all seriousness, I, I don't take lightly what I'm going to teach on this evening. And so, I want you to pray. You pray, number one, that you'll stay very, very close to the Lord because that's the only hope that you have, by the way. And number two, that I would and that we, that we would just be sheltered by the power and the protection of the Lord and we need it. We need that tonight. And, um, and so I want to talk to you. Of course, you can see it on the screen there. We have started a series called Understanding Our Statement of Faith. And this is where we are uh, right now in our statement of faith. And I think it's very, very important that we, we know what we believe about Satan. And, uh, and I'm going to be honest with you. Just begin to study this out. And the more I studied, the longer the outline got. And I was just going to stay one week here. I was just going to take uh, this Wednesday night and discuss this. But it just, uh, the Lord just kept opening up more and more and more. And so it's probably going to take at least two weeks for us to get through this. Uh, but I believe it's going to be a help to you. And so we're going to just tread very carefully and reverently here and um, understand that we're going to just give you what the Bible says and we're going to trust the Lord to protect us and, and to protect this church and uh, and to uh, watch over us tonight. So Revelation chapter 12 in your Bibles, we're getting ready to read some amazing scripture. And so if, you, if you're able to stand, let's stand tonight out of respect for the reading of God's word. Revelation chapter 12 and verse number one, and the Bible says, and there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet and upon her head, a crown of 12 stars. Now we believe this is talking about Israel Verse 2 says, And she being with child cried, travailing in birth, and pained to be delivered. Of course, that's speaking of the Messiah, the Lord Jesus. And there appeared another wonder in heaven. And behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads, ten horns, and seven crowns upon his heads. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven, and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman which was ready to be delivered for to devour her child as soon as it was born. And she brought forth a man child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. And her child was caught up unto God and to his throne. Well, the Bible's very clear about that. We know who that's talking about. We know our Lord was caught up. We know that our Bible says he's, he's gonna rule and reign with a rod of iron. And so we know that's talking about the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse six, and the woman, Israel, and the woman fled into the wilderness where she hath a place prepared of God that they should feed her there a thousand, two hundred, three score days, three and a half years. And there was, verse seven, gets more interesting and more interesting. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon and the dragon fought and his angels and prevailed not, neither was their place found any more in heaven and the great dragon was cast out. Now, we're getting ready to read several names that, are, uh, that, that, that label Satan here, label the devil, and each of these names represent something significant. First, first of all, verse 9, and the great dragon was cast out. That dragon is indicative of his viciousness. He's a vicious creature. And then it says that old serpent, well, that ties him, of course, to the Garden of Eden, called the devil, 
The devil there is, uh, the, the word devil is actually a term that means slanderer. We know he's the accuser of the brethren. We'll get into that a little bit more, probably not tonight, but next week. And Satan, which tells us he's a great adversary. The Bible says, and the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth and his angels were cast out with him. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, now has come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. And they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. By the way, how many are thankful for the blood of Jesus tonight? Amen. Amen. Yes. Yes. We're thankful for that. And they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto the death. Verse 12 says, Therefore rejoice ye heavens and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devil has come down unto you. Now, again, we're not going to get into this tonight as much as we'll get into it next Wednesday night, Lord willing. But, I would just go ahead and, and give you a little a commercial and, and say this. You don't want to be here during the tribulation period. And there are some who say we're in the tribulation period right now. After next Wednesday, you won't believe we're in the tribulation period because something very significant, very significant is going to happen in that, during that what we call the tribulation period. The Bible says for the devil is come down unto you, look at this next line, having great wrath because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. Now, we're going to break this up. I, I started to try to fit it all in tonight, and we're just going to rush it. We're just rush it way too much tonight. And I, this is too important for us to rush through. And so we're going to break it up in two different parts, I believe, and we're going to talk about what we're going to call the doctrine of Satan tonight. And I don't even want to mention his name. I, you know, you, you, I said this in Sunday school the other day. I, you know, a lot of times I'll say enemy, the enemy, the enemy. And I don't say that because I'm a compromiser. I say it because I don't want to even, I don't want to even mention his name. I, I don't even want to mention his name. Did you know that Satan likes glory any way he can get it? He doesn't... He doesn't mind bad publicity as long as he gets publicity. He doesn't mind it. And so, but, but, with, but, but with that said, it is important that we know what we believe when it comes to the devil. And so, you may be seated tonight. We're going to go to the Lord in prayer, and then we're going to jump into this Bible study tonight. I, I believe it's going to be helpful to you. I'm going to show you some things I've never taught at Calvary Baptist Church in 31 years that I've been here and, uh, and so I'm excited about giving this to you tonight, but let's pray that the Holy Spirit would just help us tonight and, and that he would bind the powers of darkness. And uh, the devil does like publicity, but he does not like to be exposed. Uh, he, does not like, he does not like his weapons to be exposed. And, and that's what we're gonna do the next couple of weeks. So let's, let's pray and ask God to help us tonight. Father, we love you and thank you so much for the privilege to be here this evening on this Wednesday evening. Lord, I know our folks have worked a long, hard day. They're a little more weary than they normally would be uh, on a, uh, than they would be on a Sunday. And so Holy Spirit, right now, supernaturally, would you give them some supernatural stamina? Father, some energy to not only listen, but to be interested and to, uh, and, and to be able to, to compress, Lord, the things that we're going to talk about tonight. God, I pray you touch us all physically tonight. Touch them, touch me. And Lord, I pray that you might bind the powers of darkness. Lord, we pray that because we know you're able to do that. And so we pray, uh, Almighty God, Almighty, Omniscient, Omnipresent, Omnipotent God, that you would bind the powers of darkness and that you would keep them away from this place. And Father, that you might protect us. Father, we plead the, the blood, the shed blood of Jesus, that victorious blood, that blood that was spotless blood. Lord, from the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world, 
We plead the blood of Jesus, Lord, acknowledging our weakness, our frailty, my frailty. Father, understanding that I'm weak. I, I'm, I'm no match for Satan. And so, Father, I need your protection, and I need your help. I need your power. And I pray that you'd protect our minds tonight. And I pray, Father, that you'd bless our discussion. And, and I pray that it would glorify the Lord. And I pray that it would uplift the name of Jesus. And I pray that, Lord, it would, uh, uh, Lord, that it would uh, illuminate us to truth. And, and because, of, because of this truth, and this is sort of the direction we're headed tonight, because of this truth, that we will determine that we're going to walk ever so close to the Lord Jesus. So, Father, help us, fill us, bless us tonight, please. We need your help. We love you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray, and for his sake, and all God's people said, amen, amen. amen. So if you were to go to our website tonight and, and uh, look at the little link that says what we believe, you'd find our statement of faith. And we've been, we've been talking about that each week on Wednesday night. If you were to go there tonight, this is what it would say. We believe in the reality of the person of Satan and that he and the fallen angels wage a spiritual warfare against the plan and purposes of God. And then on the website, we've got uh, references, John 13, 2, Acts 5, 3, uh, Ephesians 6, 11, 12. We'll get into a little bit more of those next, next week. We believe that Satan is a created angelic being who rebelled, who, who rebelled and who tempted man to join him in rebellion against God. Isaiah 14, 12 through 17. Ezekiel 28, 11 through 19. Genesis 3, uh, 1 through 5. We believe his power is supernatural, yet limited, and that he cannot act without the permission of God. Job 1, 6 through 12. 1 John 4 and verse 4. Satan's eternal end is everlasting torment in the lake of fire. Revelation chapter 20. And verse number 12. Now, let me, let me go ahead and address this first. Why is it important that we understand what we believe about, about the devil? Some would say, preacher, if you don't like him, why talk about him? Because I, I, I do believe it's important that we understand what we believe. And there are many reasons, and I won't get into all those reasons tonight. I'll just address one of those tonight. One of the reasons that I believe it's important that we understand uh, the doctrine of Satan is because many reject the claim that the devil even exists. And, and, and you know this, and I don't have to tell you this tonight, really to the world, Satan is made out to be more of a joke than he is something to be taken seriously. It's no uh, great secret. I, I, I love Dr. J. Vernon McGee. I grew up listening to Dr. McGee. My Mom and dad were great fans of Dr. McGee. We've been in his church. Been, I, I've, been in, uh, I've been in his nursery, I'll put it that way. And, and, uh, uh, and then several years ago when we were in California, we drove way out there. They've moved it now. It used to be in downtown Los Angeles, and now they've moved, moved it out to Glendale. And uh, we visited their church of the open door. And, uh, and, uh, but, but listen to this. Dr. McGee, who died in 1988, and his commentaries came out many, many years before that, uh, Dr. McGee said this, there's no mistaking this creature who's called the great dragon for he's marked out with great detail. He's talking about Revelation 12, which we're read tonight, for he is marked out with great detail. His fingerprints are put down here in the Revelation because God knew that a great percentage of the preachers of this century would teach that Satan does not exist he makes it so you cannot miss him. In other words, Scripture makes it so that you cannot miss him. If your enemy can get you to think he does not exist, he will have tremendous advantage over you. And he will be able to get a crack at you that will sweep you off your feet. Now, that's what Dr. McGee said many, many years ago. And so that was sort of prophetic of our times, 2023. And so we're living in a day when a lot of preachers are saying, you know what, the devil doesn't even exist. That he's just, you know, something that somebody made up and, and he's really not, not that big of a threat. Well, I, I'm reluctant to even put this on the screen, but uh, just to, to put it in perspective, I hope that you did not watch the Grammys this year. And we did not. But uh, 
at the Grammys, the Grammy Awards this year, Hollywood, out in Hollywood, uh, they, they had, of course, a, uh, a, the entertainment that they gave that night was heralded as satanic. Uh, Billboard magazine said it like this. By the way, they were very pro-Grammy, and they were very pro-entertainment. And they said this, as if people weren't mad enough at the results of the 2023 Grammys, now conservatives are fired up over two performers wearing devil costumes during the annual telecast. During the ceremony on Sunday, that's no accident either, February the 5th, Sam Smith and Kim Petras offered a rousing performance of their hit single, Unholy, in which Petrus performed alongside drag stars, and I'm not going to even mention the names, dressed in devil costumes while Smith was in a bright red top hat with devil horns sticking out from it for their final chorus. And so basically, Hollywood just made a big hurrah about the devil. And basically what this says to the youthful generation is that Satan's really no big deal that you can sing about him, you can use him in entertainment, and that really it's all in fun. That's nothing you have to worry about. I intend tonight to prove to you tonight, next Wednesday night, that is very far from the truth, that Satan is somebody that you don't want to contend with, that he is very, very real, and yet that's, that's our youthful generation. I wanted to put this on your screen as well. Uh, recently, a Brooklyn company was sued by Nike over the unauthorized sale of what they called Satan Shoes, an aftermarket sneaker that contains a drop of blood and was promoted by the rapper Little, Little Nas. I don't, listen, I don't know who these people are, and, and for that matter, I don't want to know who they are. And I hope that our young people will steer far, far away from these kind of people that are involved in these kind of things. Uh, didn't work out really good for this guy, by the way. He got sued by Nike, and Nike won. Um, and it's, but, but I thought this was interesting. It said a total of 666 pairs of the Satan shoes were produced by this company, which incorporated, listen to this, which incorporated drops of its employees' blood and ink into an air bubble in the Nike Air Max 97 sneakers. Now listen to this. Each pair costs $1,018. If you spend $1,018 for a pair of sneakers, you were probably 20 before you could wave bye-bye. I mean, really. But that's not the most interesting part. Each pair costs $1,018 and sold out in less than a minute. These sneakers had a drop of blood and a pentagram on them. And when they went on the market, 666 sneakers that sold for over $1,000 sold out in less than 60 seconds. Now, let me tell you why, why that is. Because at least to a lot of our society and our culture and our young people, the devil is nothing but a myth. He's a joke. He's a fable. He's a, he's a figment of some Baptist preacher's mind. You know what? We've just made him up in the pulpit and we've drummed him up to be, you know, to be something greater than he is. Uh, but the truth of the matter is, Satan is real. And he's nothing to be meddled with. And it's nothing, the doctrine of Satan is nothing to be taken lightly. Now, I want to give you tonight, I want to give you some things that, that we know about the doctrine of Satan, and we're only going to get through the first point tonight, but how about this? Number one, I want you to understand that Satan is a created angelic being, and that's really important for us to know that, and, and of course, that's, uh, uh, that's specified in our, uh, in our uh, statement of faith. Satan is a created angelic being. Now, why is that important for us to understand? I'm going to draw out some things here in just a moment that I believe will, that, that I believe will help you. He is a created angelic being. Uh, and, and, and may I say this, he is quite the created being. Now, 
three things, three sub points I'll give you, and that's all I'm going to give you tonight, and we'll give you the rest of it next week. But number one, I want you to notice this, that Satan, uh, it appears that he was created beautifully, beautifully. And so take your Bibles tonight, if you will, and turn to the book of Ezekiel, Ezekiel chapter number 28. Why is it important for us to understand this? I'm going to get into this, and I, I believe this is going to help you. And Boy, I hope our young people will really give preacher a good hearing tonight. Uh, Satan is a created being, and it appears that he was created beautifully. Now, when you go to the book of Ezekiel, Ezekiel chapter 28, we find in Ezekiel chapter 28 that the Lord leads Ezekiel the prophet to rebuke a character called the Prince of Tyre. This is a a, a legitimate man, a, a legitimate ruler, the Prince of Tyre. Look at Ezekiel 28 verse 1. The word of the Lord came again unto me, saying, Son of man, say unto the prince of Tyrus, thus saith the Lord God, because thine heart is lifted up, and thou hast said, I am a God. I sit in the seat of God, in the midst of the seas. Yet, he says, yet thou art a man and not God, though thou set thine heart as the heart of God. So here's this ruler in Tyre, and he has set himself up as God, And God comes to Ezekiel and says, Ezekiel, I want you to go down there and I want you to prophesy against him. I want you to rebuke him because he thinks that he is setting himself up as God. And so he rebukes the prince of Tyre. So Ezekiel 28 uh, mentions the prince of Tyre, but notice this, it also mentions the king of Tyre. Now, the prince of Tyre is a man that is a, a, a legitimate ruler that's made out of flesh and blood like you and I, but the Bible mentions the king. This guy's not the prince. This guy's the king. He's the king of Tyre. And this is the devil himself. So this passage has a double meaning here. Look at Ezekiel 28, verse number 12. Son of man, take up a lamentation upon the king of Tyrus. Well, let's see, who, who is this king of Tyrus? And say unto him, thus saith the Lord God, thou sealest up the sum full of wisdom, and perfect in beauty. Verse 13, thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was thy covering, the sardius, topaz, and the diamond, the beryl, the onyx, and the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, and the carbuncle, and gold. The workmanship of thy tibrays and of thy pipes was prepared in thee in the day that thou was created. And so it's important for us to understand that Satan was created beautifully. Now, why is that important? And this is the reason. Because there are many who believe the devil is a hideous creature. They believe he's ugly. They believe he has horns. And, a, uh, and that's why I used uh, so many other pictures I could have used. I specifically used this picture tonight. They believe that he has horns and a pointed tail and he holds a, 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 a pitchfork. Now, let me, tell you what, let me tell you what that is right there. That is a picture of a God. And it's the God Pan. And so this was a God that was worshiped back in Bible days. And so, you know what, they, they passed that picture along and you know what, people picked it up, Hollywood picked it up and said, you know what, we're gonna, we're gonna make the devil out to be the god Pan. Uh, and so this is actually the, the picture of the, of the pagan god Pan uh, and how they, at least how they believe that he used to look. Uh, but I want you to understand that Satan is not hideous. Satan is not ugly. Nothing can be further from the truth. In all reality, Satan is beautiful. You say, whoa, preacher, wait a minute here. Satan is beautiful. He is a beautifully created creature. Now, that's important, and I'll tell you why. He knows, since he he is a beautiful creature, he knows how to present destructive things as beautiful. Now, Take your Bibles tonight and turn over to 2 Corinthians chapter number 11. 2 Corinthians 11 with me. And look at verse number 13. 2 Corinthians 11 and verse 13. And notice what our Bible says here. 2 Corinthians 11 verse 13 about this character, the devil. 
2 Corinthians 11, verse 13, the Bible says, for such are false prophets, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. Look at verse 14. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. And so I want you to understand that Satan is not ugly. Satan is not hideous. Satan is beautiful. He's beautiful. And that same Satan, the Bible says, that has wisdom and is very subtle and deceptive, that same uh, Satan is able to take ugly things, very ugly things and disastrous things, and he's uh, able to make them look very beautiful. That's exactly why. Have you ever noticed this? That's exactly why the devil never uses ugly people for bad commercials. You know what, if you watch a commercial and it's it's a controversial commercial and it's promoting something that's sinful and wicked and ungodly, have you ever noticed it's always the most beautiful women? And it's always the most handsome men. I mean, every hair's in place, every tooth is straight. I mean, they've got the whitest teeth, the biggest smile. They've got the greatest physique. I mean, you know why? Because the devil doesn't mess with ugly things. The devil takes ugly things and turns them into beauty. That's exactly why the alcohol commercials only show the beautiful side of drinking. That's why drug use is is portrayed as fun and, and entertaining and exhilarating. That's why immorality is conveyed as something that's practiced by everybody. Everybody's doing it. Isn't that what they tell the young people? Everybody's doing it. I mean, you might as well go ahead. I mean, I know what your pastor says. I know what your parents say. But, you know, they're sort of from that old school, you know, and they really don't know what's right. And I mean, beside everybody's doing it. And beside that, you know what? It's all natural and normal. And, and beside that, it's all safe. Isn't that what you're preaching in the schools? It's okay to do it. It's all safe. Now, you know what that is? That is Satan making ugly things look beautiful. Isn't it interesting that the devil never reports on the 15 million alcoholics in America who are spending their money for their kids' groceries on booze? Isn't it something how the devil never tells us about the estimated 20 million, are you listening to me, 20 million new sexually transmitted infections every year just in the United States alone? And check that statistic out. Did you know there's a new sexually transmitted disease? There's one million a day. One million a day. You know why? Because the devil's a liar. And the devil wants you to look at the, the, the beautiful part of it. He wants you to see it's fun and it's exhilarating and, and the bright lights. And man, he never shows you the he never shows you the car that's wrapped around the tree. And he never shows you the uh, you know, your loved one that's laying in the bed that's that's no longer breathing. He never shows you the one that's overdosed and the one that's in jail, and, and he never shows you the one that kills their wife and kills their kids. And he never shows you that. You know why? Because Satan takes the the, the ugly thing and the destructive things and the disastrous things and he turns them around and he makes them look really, really nice. And so he is a created being. He's created beautifully. But hey, watch this, church. Number two, it not only appears he was created beautifully, he was created musically. Now look back at Ezekiel 28 again, because I want to show you something. And you, you saw this probably, and some of you picked up on it, and some of you maybe didn't, but look at Ezekiel 28. And so here the prophet Ezekiel is prophesying against the king of Tyrus, which is Satan. And he says in verse 13, again, Ezekiel 28, verse 13, thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God, every precious stone was thy covering Uh, the sardius, topaz, the diamond, the beryl, the onyx, the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, the carbuncle, and gold. Look at the last part here, Ezekiel 28. He says in verse 13, the workmanship of thy, notice the word, the workmanship of thy to braise and of thy 
types, notice that word, and of thy pipes was prepared in thee in the day that thou was created. Now, there are some scholars who say, that's not what that means. I read some and they said, that's, that's not what that means. You know, it doesn't mean he was musical. That's not, that's not what the word means. But listen to this. The word to braise there in Ezekiel 28, verse number 13, is the Hebrew word top, T-O-P, or top, T-O-P. And, it's, and it means this, it means, it means a percussion instrument, and specifically, you can look this up for yourself, it means a tambourine. A tambourine, something, you, something you'd make a music with by hitting something. It's the Hebrew word, T-O-P, top. Now, you don't have to go there tonight, but just jot this down. If, in, in Exodus chapter 15, how remember the story in Exodus 15 where the children of Israel have crossed the Red Sea? God parts the Red Sea and the children of Israel come across on dry ground and they get across and then Pharaoh's army tries, tries the same thing and God closes the Red Sea on top of them. Y'all remember that story? And the Bible says after God gives the children of Israel a great victory that Moses' sister Miriam comes out and, and the Bible says in Exodus 15, 20 and Miriam the prophetess, the sister of Aaron took a timbrel in her hand. Same Hebrew word. She took a timbrel in her hand and all the women went out after her with timbrels and with dances. In other words, they went out and they were playing music with these timbrels. So it's the exact same word in Exodus 15 that's used in Ezekiel chapter number 28. The word pipes there, the workmanship of thy tabrays and of thy pipes. The word pipes, it means a groove or a socket, or a cavity, a cavity. It's, a, it's an interesting word. It, it's the idea of something that's hollowed out. Think about it. It'd be like a wind instrument, like a flute, or a trumpet. But some believe this. Some believe that Satan was actually, and I read a lot of, a lot of different things, but some believe that Satan was actually in charge of the musical worship in heaven, that he was the song leader of heaven. Now, you say, preacher, you believe that? I, I don't know, and I don't think it matters. But I do believe he was a musical creature. And I'll tell you something else. I don't believe this, that Satan had instruments. I believe he was an instrument. I don't believe that he had to go get the instruments. I believe God built it in, and he was a musical creature. He was not only beautiful, but he was musically created. And so, and maybe, maybe just maybe in charge of worship, they're in heaven. Now, quickly, let me say this. All the more reason that you and I have to be careful about the music that we listen to. Because Satan has wisdom and he's subtle and he's deceptive. He is a musical creature and that we understand this, that music has incredible power and Satan knows how to use it. That's, that's what's so important. Did you know that music can encourage or music can discourage? Music can excite you or music can calm you. Music can incite or music can soothe. How many remember this statement? Music has charms to soothe the savage beast. Remember that? And by the way, that's true. My first job I ever worked was in a dairy farm. Milking cows. And, uh, and I remember, and, and, and the, the owner of the farm was a stickler about this. When those cows came in to be milked, he wanted music playing. And he believed, and he's right. He believed that that music helped calm those cows down. And he believed that that music helped those cows to give more milk <laughs> and to give happier milk, <laughs> and whatever the case may be. Now, I would say this, that music has power. Think about it like this. Music sets the mood. Music sets the mood. Music sets the mood for things like worship. Music sets the, thing, uh, sets the mood for things like war or victory, for things like relaxation and enjoyment. Listen, you ever had a time where you just had a rough day and you thought, man, I just want to go home and I'm just going to put on some easy music. I'm going to get me a cup of coffee and I'm just going to sit down on the sofa and just let it calm, let it calm my nerves. You know why? Because music has power. 
Music has power. Hey, when you eat at an Italian restaurant, how many like Italian food? Italian food, yeah. When you eat in an Italian restaurant, you know what you expect to hear? You expect to hear Italian music. You know why? It puts you in the mood. You know what? Violins and accordions and all that. Man, makes want to eat lasagna. I mean, he does. <laughs> now, to be quite honest with you, anything makes me want to eat lasagna, but, but, but you, you, you know what I'm talking about. And uh, all right, how about this? When you eat at a Chinese restaurant, when you eat at a Chinese restaurant, you're eating at the Chinese buffet. You don't expect to hear violins and accordions. You don't expect to hear Dean Martin singing in the background. You know what? If you're eating in a Chinese restaurant, you know what you expect to hear? Ding, tong, ding, ding, tong, tong, ding. You know, I mean, I mean, is that true? Man, there's just something about that music. That music goes with an egg roll. I mean, it just does. I mean, it just, it, 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 sets, it sets the mood. Now, think about it. If you attend a college football game, and, and, you know, my wife and I, we don't watch much NFL much anymore, but well, we like to watch college. And sometimes we watch Ohio play, because I know we've got some Ohioans in this church, and, and we watch, and man, I'm telling you, if you want to watch football where they really get into it, watch college. Man, that stadium is packed. And there's people who are all wearing their colors, and man, they're waving their towels. And I mean, man, they're like killing, killing, you know. And now, wait a minute now. Man, Ohio's getting ready to play, and man, the coaches got them pumped up. And I mean, they run out of the, they run out of the, you know, out of the, 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 the back quarters there. And they, man, they storm on the field, and they've got the smoke machines going, and they're running through the smoke. And all of a sudden, you hear over the loud speaker, ding, tong, ting, ding, tong. You're not thinking victory, you're thinking egg roll. <laughs> Am I telling the truth tonight? You know what, when that football team, man, when those three, 400 pound guys run out on, on that uh, field, you know what you're expecting? You're here expecting some band start playing the charge. Man, I mean, go get him, knock him down tear his arm off and hit him with the bloody. I mean, you know, you know. I mean, that's what you expect. Why? Because music has power. Hey, kids, I want you to understand something. Music has power. And Satan knows how to use it. And so people sometimes will say, oh, preacher, it's just a fad. No, it's music. And it has power. And and if you're listening to the wrong kind of music, please understand something, that Satan is a musical creature. And he knows how to use that music. He knows how to incite you. He knows how to excite you. He knows how to discourage you. He knows how to, to, to put you up or pull you down or, or make you rebellious or whatever the case may be. And so because, because we know the way that he's created, you know what, we have to be very, very careful about what we listen to. And so Satan... It appears was created beautifully. It appears he was created musically. Now listen, listen to this. We're going to be done. It's 829. Listen to this. It appears he was created beautifully. It appears he was created musically. It is sure that he was created supernaturally. Now look back at Ezekiel 28. We're, we're done. Ezekiel 28 and verse 14. Wow. Wow. Ezekiel 28, verse 14, the Bible says about this devil, thou art the anointed cherub that covereth. And then God says, I have set thee so. Thou wast upon the holy mountain of God. Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Now, forgive me for paying attention to my notes, but I'm gonna teach something tonight I've never taught. I've been at this church for 31 years. And I have taught, at least I, I sort of thought this, I, I have taught that Satan was created as an archangel. There's nothing in Scripture that supports that. Satan was created as a cherub. And there's a difference. 
Think about it. Angels, you say, preacher, what is this? Hang, hang in there. Angels typically serve as two things. They serve as messengers and they serve as servants. Usually an angel is taking a message or doing some type of service that the Lord needs done. Remember when the prophet got out in the wilderness and got discouraged and the Bible says an angel woke him up and he prepared a meal for him and a cruise of water, put a cruise of water at his head. He was acting as a servant. He was acting as a messenger. So angels typically serve as messengers and servants, but not a cherub, not a cherub. A cherub is associated with staying immediately and hard by the throne of God. A cherub is believed, to have, is believed to be some type of creature that protects or defends. Now, you don't forget this. Remember when God came to Moses and said, Moses, I want you to, to build the tabernacle and I want, you to, I want you to create an ark, ark of the covenant. And on the top of that ark, I want there to be a lid and it's called the mercy seat. And on the top of that mercy seat, I want two cherubs facing one another with their wings outstretched over the mercy seat. And so those cherubs have the job of protecting. Those cherubs have the job of defending. Think about it like this. This is probably not a good illustration, but this is what came to my mind. Angels would be comparable to local law enforcement, while cherubim would be comparable to secret service. Secret service supersedes the local law. It's the difference between an angel and a cherub. So I, here again, I, I'm not preaching politics tonight. You, you stand wherever God tells you to stand. But a few weeks ago, a district attorney in New York City put some accusations out against former president Donald Trump and they subpoenaed him, or, or whatever you call it, and made him fly to New York City. And this district attorney wanted to fingerprint him, handcuff him, and possibly arrest him. It was all over the news. You saw it, all over the news. It didn't happen. You know why it didn't happen? Because he is still under Secret Service protection. And the Secret Service said, he'll fly to New York and he'll go through some of the procedures. You won't arrest him and you won't put him in jail because he is under Secret Service protection and it trumped everything. That's the difference between an angel and a cherub. An angel would be like the local law enforcement this, this cherub that we're talking about, or cherubim, plural, this cherub is portrayed as, as, as an incredibly, an incredibly powerful creature. Now, we know something. I'm going somewhere, church. Oh, hang in there with me. We know something. We know that angels have been created incredibly powerful. One angel wiped out a whole army. One angel. One angel. We don't know that there were more than one. As far as we know, there's just one death angel. One death angel came through Egypt, killed every firstborn. And the Bible says in Exodus, I'm sorry, yeah, I think it's Exodus chapter 12, and there was a great cry in Egypt. For there was not a house where, where there was not one that was dead. That death angel, one, one angel done that. And so angels in and of themselves are incredibly powerful. But when you, and I've never noticed this, when you begin to study this out about the cherubs and the cherubim, evidently the cherubim are a step above the angels. In fact, you're, are, you, are you still in Ezekiel? Turn back a few pages, look at Ezekiel 10. Ezekiel chapter 10, and look at verse number five, and look what Ezekiel said about the cherubim. Ezekiel chapter 10 and verse number five. Ezekiel 10 verse five, Ezekiel said, and the sound, whoa, and the sound of the cherubim's wings was heard even to the outer court. Look at this, as the voice of the almighty God. When he speaketh. Wow. Now, you know what that tells us? That tells us that cherubim 
are nothing to be meddled with. And that's what Satan was. He was a cherubim. That's why I get, that's why we're, we're done tonight. That's why I get a little perturbed at preachers who act like I can just flick the devil off like a little, like a little flea. We come up with these idiotic gospel songs that just make it sound like the devil's nothing. Ain't got time for you, devil. Like we can just flip him away. He's no big deal. I'm going to tell you something, church. The devil is a powerful, powerful being. Now, I'm not singing his praises. Not, not at all. In fact, I preach this with fear and trembling. You know what this message ought to tell us tonight? Oh, man. I've got to stay close to this book. I've got to stay close to the Lord. Hey, listen, if you think, if you think for a half a second that you can wander away from the will of God and it's no big deal, let me tell you something. The Bible says he walketh about as a roaring lion seeking, seeking whom he may devour. That word devour means to gulp. Entire. And you know what that tells us? Man, by the grace of God, my wife and I, we've got to stay in church. By the grace of God, we're being here every service. We're coming for Sunday school. We're, man, we're going to get involved in the ministry. I mean, we're going we're to serve the Lord. Why? Because we understand something. We've got to walk just as close to the Lord as we possibly can because he's the only hope and the only protection that we have. We'll go a little further next week, Lord willing. Let's bow our heads tonight before we go. Before we go tonight, let me ask a question or two, and we're going to head out. How many are here tonight? And you'd say, Pastor, if I died tonight, I know beyond a shadow of any doubt, I know that I'm saved I'm a child of God. I'm on my way to heaven. If that's you, with heads bowed and eyes closed, you just slip your hand up and say, Preacher, I know I'm saved. I know I'm saved. Hallelujah. I think that's probably just about everybody. You can lower your hands. Is there anybody here tonight, though? Is there one here anywhere? And you'd say, Pastor, I couldn't raise my hand. And if I died tonight, I'm not sure I would go. I'm not sure heaven would be my destiny. And I need you to pray for me. Is there one anywhere? And you'd let me pray for you tonight, Pastor. If I died, I'm not sure of heaven. Would you remember me in your prayers? Anybody that I can pray for tonight about that? As far as I can tell, I don't see any hands. So I take it by that then that everybody here tonight is saved. If you're here and you're not saved, I hope you'll come in just a moment. And let us take a Bible and show you how you can be saved. Hey, Calvary Baptist Church, child of God, are you walking ever so close to the Savior? Are you in His will tonight? Are you dedicated to Him? Are you walking so close you can hear His heartbeat? Have you spent time in His Word today? Have you spent time in prayer today? Have you spent time loving on him, thanking him, praising him? We've got to. We've got to. Because we have an adversary called the devil who wants to ruin our life. If the Lord spoke to your heart tonight and you need to come, listen, the altars are going to be open just for a few moments tonight if you need to come. And so let's all stand tonight. Our heads are bowed. Our eyes are closed. It could be there's somebody here tonight that says, Pastor, I am saved. I've already raised my hand as a testament to that. But preacher, I need to rededicate my life to the Lord. I need to rededicate my life to Christ. Preacher, we need to rededicate our home to the Lord. We know we do. We've got to get back in, in, in the will of God. We've got to. We don't have a choice. We've got to. Whatever it may be, listen, the Lord's dealing with your heart. If you need to come tonight, you come while we wait. Father, we thank you for your blessings. Thank you for the privilege of being back at Calvary tonight. And Lord, thank you for what you've shown us from your precious book this evening. 
God, just help us to walk out of here tonight saying, oh Lord, oh Lord, I've got to walk close to the Lord. God, I need you. Oh Lord, I need you. I need your protection. God, I need you to shelter me. I need you tonight. God, have your way in this invitation. Speak to hearts, I pray. And we sure thank you in Christ's name. Our heads are bowed, our eyes are closed. I'm going to make my way to the main floor just for a moment tonight. And if you're here and you need prayer, we're going to be here for you. And you come while we wait. You come. If you're watching live stream, we're delighted to have you with us this evening. There's a number on the bottom of your screen, 704-327-5662. And uh, if we can help you or pray with you, please call that number right now. We have some folks that are waiting by the phone. Would love to talk to you right now, okay? Hey, if you're here and you need to come, you come. We'll pray with you tonight. this way tonight church look we're going to sing this little chorus before we go tonight amazing grace how sweet the sound boy aren't you glad you're saved tonight man man praise the Lord praise God I'm not going to have to be here during the tribulation I'm going out in the rapture if he comes let's sing it together tonight amazing grace amazing grace how I got good. I got good news. Good news. You say, man, Pastor sounds pretty bleak. He's pretty powerful. Yeah, yes, yes, he is. Yes, he is. But don't forget what we said at the first. He's a created being. That means that somebody greater than him created him. Sometimes we get the we, we get the idea that that the devil and God are on the same level. Oh, no. No, they're not. And then we have some religions that are teaching that Jesus and Satan are brothers. <laughs> That's not true either. Oh, listen. The Bible says, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. And so thank God we have the victory. In fact, our Bible says that we are not just conquerors. We are more than conquerors through him that love does. Aren't you glad about that tonight? Amen. Amen. Hey, while these finish up in the altars tonight, let's sing it one last time. I want you to sing it like you mean it, man. Sing it like a big choir tonight. Amen. Thank the Lord. Let's sing it together. Amazing grace, how sweet. Praise God.
can you lift a hand tonight? Praise God, 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 praise God. free tonight. Amen. Well, aren't you glad we serve a triumphant Savior tonight? Amen. Well, you know what? Lord, looking forward to Sunday, but maybe the Lord will come before then, and then we'll realize just how great He really is, and uh, we worship Him forever and ever and ever. So glad you came to the Lord's house tonight. So, fellas, don't forget Saturday. Um, they're going to be doing some digging down here. Uh, on the on the old property down here, what we're calling the Space Life Centers, we're trying to get this sort of finished up, and uh, and I appreciate uh, Lee and I think Josh, they're going to come and try to dig it out, mostly with an excavator, but we're going to have to do a little bit by hand, and so if you can help out a little bit on Saturday, if you'll be sure you find Brother Lee tonight after the service and let him know about that, we would appreciate it very very much. Hey, it's good to see you in God's house tonight. Thank you for coming. I hope you have a great week this week. Pray for those that are having surgery, and uh, we'll look forward to seeing you back this coming Lord's Day. And so I hope you'll be in your place. It's all right? All hearts free? Isn't the Lord good? Amen. Brother Mike Horn. Brother Mike, come on up, if you will, brother, and dismiss us in a word of prayer tonight. All right, folks, we love you. Thanks for coming tonight. Father, we thank Thee for the Word of God. We thank Thee for a pastor that will share the Word of God. We thank You, Father, that we never get too old to learn the Word of God. It's new every day. Your blessings are new every morning. And the Word of God is new every day, too, because we can never know all of it. I thank You, Father, that Though he was a cherub, he's still a cherub. But he's a defeated foe. And I'm so glad, Lord, that you came and destroyed the works of the devil. I thank you, Father, that your blood of the Lord Jesus, that's on the mercy seat in heaven underneath the two cherubs, is sufficient for our sins. Dismiss us with your blessing. And use us this week to bring glory to thy name. And we'll thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for joining us today. We consider it an honor to serve you. And our prayer is that the service was a blessing and an encouragement to your life. If you were impacted today by the preaching of God's word, we encourage you to respond. If we can pray with you, or if you would like to make a decision today for Christ, please call us here at 704-327-5662. We have people waiting right now on the lines prepared to help you. Again, thank you for joining us today, and we hope to welcome you again soon. Have a wonderful week.